Most houseplant deaths are a result of a watering issue. Whether you overwatered a plant, underwatered a plant, aren't using the right water, aren't using the right watering tools. You'd think watering houseplants is intuitive, but for a lot of us, it isn't. And I want you to succeed in your plant parenthood journey. So we are dedicating an entire video all about the ins and outs of watering houseplants. Welcome. Growing joy. Hello, plant friend. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I am here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life by doing so. And if you want to have a joyful relationship with plants, you need to know how to water them. Like I said in the intro, you think that it's intuitive, but it's not. I remember back in my days as a plant killer, I used to spritz plant leaves thinking that that was the amount of water that it needed. I used to think that you could only water plants in the morning. I used to do all sorts of weird stuff when I was watering my house plants. So I'm letting you know, no matter what weird thing you've done, I love you, I'm here for you, and I won't judge you. And this whole video is just dedicated to helping you have every single technique and concept about watering to empower you to make the right choices for your collection. This video is made in partnership with Proven Winners Leaf Joy, the growers of all of the amazing houseplants that you see on this table. Thank you so much for helping me make this video with all of this knowledge. Thank you so much. I'm feeling spicy today, so I'm gonna blow up my own spot. So wait until the end of the video. I'm gonna go through all of the correct watering techniques, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna go back to my plant killer days and I'm gonna tell you everything I did wrong and then what I should have been doing so you can learn from my mistakes in case you might've made them. Okay, so we are going to get into all of the different watering techniques and tools to water, but before then, I wanna go into the why the how and the when of watering. So why do you water houseplants? Houseplants need water for more than just being hydrated, right? Obviously they need water to stay hydrated, but that water helps them maintain turgidity. I don't think a lot of people know that, but a lot of times if you have a houseplant that's flopping over, it might be dehydrated. And when you give it a good drink of water, it's able to stand up again, right? So water is used for turgidity. It's used for hydration. It's a part of photosynthesis, which is what plants use to make their own food. Plants use photosynthesis to make their food, they need light, they need water. So food and light are in direct correlation with each other for the happiness of your plant and if it's well fed or not. Also, you need to know that if your plant is in more light, it will need more water because it's doing more photosynthesis. If your plant is in less light, it usually will need less water because it's gonna be photosynthesizing slowly. So if you're ever in a situation where you've accidentally overwatered your plant, or not even accidentally, you're just like getting to know, getting to understand your plant and its drinking habits, a great way to kind of remedy that before it, the roots start to rot is by putting it in a window or putting it under a grow light where it can get a lot more light and it can photosynthesize faster and use up some of that water. Another hack that you could do is if it's a plant that's in a plastic pot, you could take the plant out and put it in similar size terracotta pot and the terracotta will dry some of the soil out as well. But with an overwatered plant as well, after you go through that, you're gonna wanna make sure that the roots didn't rot. So take the plant out of the pot and if you see rotten roots, clip them off so the rot doesn't continue. And also in clipping the roots, it'll instigate the roots to keep growing. Water is the way nutrients are transported up and down the plant, right? So when you fertilize a plant, you usually do it through some sort of water. The root hairs absorb the water, bring it up and down the xylem and phloem of the plant, and that's how the plant gets its nutrients. So water is essential. What's that Zoolander quote? Water is the essence of life and life is the essence of water. So that's the why. How? How do plants use water and absorb water? So plants have roots and on those roots are little tiny root hairs. Root hairs help the roots absorb water. The roots then pull the water into the plant and it goes up and down the xylem and phloem like I talked about. This is the issue with overwatering. So what happens is when you overwater a plant, the plant's roots sit in water and those root hairs need oxygen as much as they need water. So if you're putting it in 100% water, the plant basically suffocates. The roots suffocate and they die. And if a plant has no roots, then it has no means of bringing the water up into itself. So no roots, dead plant, don't do that. 
And that's why it's important to use pots with drainage holes, because when you are watering your plants, you never want the bottom of the pot, you never want the plant's roots to sit in water. So this is a great example of a cash po. This pot itself doesn't have holes in the bottom of it, but instead of planting this plant in this pot, I keep it in its nursery pot, which has holes. When I water it, the water drips out of the holes in the bottom of the pot, I let it drain, and then I put it back in its cash po. I get the beautiful look of this planter, but I don't kill my plant. How convenient. Now, let's talk about the when of watering. This is going to be different for every single person because your watering will be dependent on the light that your plant gets, how dry your environment is, and all sorts of different environmental factors, which season it is, if you're getting more light in the spring and summer, if you're maybe getting more light in the winter, if the leaves fall off the trees outside and allow more light to come into your window. So the frequency is really dependent on the plant owner. So I highly encourage you, do not water your plants on a schedule. Do not water all of your plants every Every Sunday because that's what the care card said. You shouldn't be watering wet soil. That's kind of a rule of thumb that people talk about. Don't water wet soil. So if I come, I notice this plant soil is already wet. I'm not going to give it more water because that's going to oversaturate it. And that's when you're going to get that root rot that I just talked about. The general rule of thumb, and different plants have different watering needs, um, the general rule of thumb with most tropical houseplants that are aeroids is that you're going to let the top part of the soil dry out and then you're going to water it again. Obviously, if you have African violets, ferns, calathea, alocasia, that doesn't apply. But when it's time to water, if you struggle with understanding when it's time to water, moisture meters are great for beginner plant parents. This is a device that I can stick in the soil. It's fancy and through technology or like through its sensors, it tells me if it's wet. So this tells me that the soil is already moist and I don't need to water it, right? It's right in the middle of the moist moisture. It says dry, moist, and wet. After a while, if I was a beginner plant parent, I would use this moisture meter. I would get to know, you know, how quickly my soil dries out. And then after a while, you don't really need to use a moisture meter. So when I was a beginner plant parent, I use this a lot. I rarely use these anymore, but I do recommend them because it just helps you get more in tune with your plant. Another way to understand when it's the right time to water your plant is by picking it up. You have to train yourself how to do this, but once you water your plant and the soil is fully saturated, pick the plant up and note how heavy it is. You're going to notice it's way heavier than a dry plant. Then what you'll be able to do is once you get to know your plants, as you walk around your plant collection, you'll be able to know if it's time to water just by picking it up. So I'd be able to be like, mm, this feels heavy. I'm good. I'm going to wait a couple more days until I come back and water. With the when, also, I just want to say, you know, I wrote a whole self-help book about how to use plants to live a happier life. I also think watering and figuring out when it's the right time to water can be a mindful moment. There's two different ways to check your soil moisture if you're using your finger. You can jab your finger in the soil, pull it out, know if it's wet or, wet or dry, and then get on with your day. Or you can like make a mindful moment of it. Take a deep breath, feel the soil. You can notice, is it cold? Cooler soil tends to be wet. Drier soil tends to be warmer. Try and engage your senses. Sometimes I'll even smell the soil, right? Because I want that nice earthy experience. But like you can make watering a really mindful experience, a cell phone free experience, or you can just kind of like move throughout your day. Live your life. Either one works as long as you're watering your plants correctly. But I just wanted to give you that moment of growing joy if it inspires you. So let's dive into watering techniques now. So I have some plants that we can demo with. Now, I wouldn't normally water this plant because the soil is moist, but all our plants are well watered right now. So we're going to do a little demo for you. Top watering. So there's two different main techniques. There's top watering and there's bottom watering. I'm going to say that 90% of the time for most of your house plants, you should top water because if we think about it, if we go into nature, plants are getting watered through rain, right? They're getting top watered naturally. So a few tips that I have found over caring for house plants for almost a decade, you're going to water thoroughly but not necessarily frequently. So I would rather you really give this plant a really good water, let the water be kind of streaming out the bottom of the pot. So that's a thorough water and then wait for it to dry out. That deep watering is going to encourage the roots to grow down. It's going to encourage overall plant health than just giving like a little spritz of water every day. The roots really aren't going to be able to absorb what they need. 
Do not water your plants with ice cubes. Please, pretty, pretty, please do not water your plants with ice cubes. A lot of people do that. Plants don't like cold water. Try and water your plants with just average, you know, room temperature water or even warm water over cold water. Because once again, most houseplants are tropical plants. They live in the jungle. That's warm, warm, humid environments, right? They're not getting freezing cold ice experience at all, right? They're not experiencing ice cold weather in any capacity. So don't give it to them. So anyway... Here is how I water my plants. I do it twofold. I give it what I call it, kind of call like an amuse bouche or like uh, if you love pour over coffee, you know how you bloom the coffee grounds before you do your full pour over coffee? Well, what I like to do in case the soil is kind of dry, I give it a little drink first and I give the water and I water the plant near the center of the stem. Because if your soil is too dry and you water too close to the edge of the pot, the water is gonna run down the side of the pot and it's not going to actually get absorbed into the soil. So I bloom the soil, if you will. I give it a little drink. I make sure that it actually goes into the soil and not out the side of the pot. And then I'm gonna go in and give it a much more thorough water. I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna water it, and then I'm gonna see it drain until I notice that I have water dripping out of the bottom of the plant. Now, if you have a planter with a saucer, you can leave if you notice there's extra water in the bottom of the pot, that's fine. You can leave that. Rule of thumb for water in the bottom of the saucer, you can leave it for like an hour or so because of capillary action, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, some of the water might get absorbed into the plant just kind of at a slower pace than if you uh, still see water in the saucer after like an hour or at least 12 hours, you're going to dump this water out in the sink. I might just dump it in here and see if it actually gets absorbed, which we were pretty successful. And then once it drains, I'm going to pop it back in the cash pot, and this is going to be a very happy plant. Now, let's talk about bottom watering. Bottom watering got really popular a little while ago. And I get it because if you're lazy, if you're a lazy plant parent, bottom watering is going to be your best friend. Bottom watering essentially is when you take a bowl, you fill it with water, and through capillary action, you allow the soil to wick up the water and feed itself and give itself kind of the exact right amount of water that it needs. So in order to bottom water, you need a pot with holes at the bottom. You fill a bowl with water. You make sure that the pot with the holes at the bottom is sitting in the water and through those holes, the soil is going to wick it up and over a course of time, sometimes this will happen quickly, sometimes it'll take a while, the soil will kind of rehydrate itself. This is a great technique for if you have a plant that has compacted soil. If your plant has compacted soil, I think I have a demo on what that looks like for you. So this plant hasn't been watered in a while and it has compacted soil. You'll know if a plant has compacted soil because the soil is basically going to be like one rock and it's pulled away from the side of the pot. That's what happens when I was saying before you water the plant and the water ends up just running down the side of the pot and doesn't rehydrate. This soil gets hydrophobic and you actually can't really rehydrate it. So bottom watering is an amazing opportunity to rehydrate a plant. So actually, let's do it with this. This is also a terracotta pot. So um, terracotta wicks moisture a lot faster than plastic. So if you're a cereal overwaterer, you should put your plants in terracotta pots because the terracotta will help you out and it'll wick and kind of absorb some of the excess water. Um, so I'm going to take this planter. I'm going to put it in my bowl of water. I'm going to leave it. Bottom watering is also really fun to do with kids because that's how you can teach them about capillary action. And over time, you're going to notice that the level of water in the bowl is going to go down and the color of the soil is going to change. So this soil is a very light brown texture right now. And when the soil is fully hydrated, it's going to be a dark brown. You're going to easily notice that it's all of a, a sudden become hydrated. With bottom watering, also the terracotta will absorb a little bit of water. The downside to bottom watering is that because it's pulling water up, it's also pulling any calcium, any weird nutrients, um, anything weird that might be in your tap water, it's pulling it into the soil. When you top water, you're basically flushing the soil every time. When you bottom water, you're pulling it up. So if you choose to bottom water your plants once a quarter at least, do it once a month actually, water the plant and let the water run out of the bottom of the pot so that you can flush the soil in case there's any like deposits of anything in there. I also love to bottom water plants in tiny pots because that can get really overwhelming. So I'll get one tray of water and I'll put all my tiny pots in it. 
and bottom watering happens really quickly in tiny pots. Bottom watering is also great for African violets, um, plants that don't like water on their leaves. Bottom watering is a great thing because then you're not worrying about getting water droplets from top watering. But I would say in general, top water your plants 90% of the time, bottom water your plants 10% of the time, live your best life. If you're lazy, bottom water more. Let's talk about self-watering planters for a minute. So self-watering planters, if you are someone who travels a lot, you forget, you don't want to have a watering routine, self-watering planters could be a great opportunity for you. There's all sorts of different varieties of self-watering planters. Usually they have a water reservoir, a string that, you know, wicks the water up and keeps the soil hydrated. Uh, self-watering planters are great for plants that love evenly moist soil. So your calathea, your alocasia, your African violets, your ferns. Um, I have self-watering planters. I've used them before. My only word of advice with self-watering planters is the water reservoir ends up needing to be refilled on a completely different calendar and schedule than your plants that are needing to be water, watered. So I've found in the past that I actually forget about those self-watering planters and I forget to refill the water reservoir. And I've killed a couple plants with those self-watering planters because it wasn't in my watering schedule to check on them. So learn from my mistakes in that one. Another watering tool, if you don't want a self-watering planter that I've recently found, is these cutie types of devices. So this is a watering spike. This is a glazed ceramic water reservoir in the shape of a cute little shroomy. And then this is a terracotta spike that's porous. So what happens is, let me see if I could do this on camera without getting water everywhere. Probably not, because I am pure chaos usually when it comes to watering. So you fill this water reservoir, and then I don't know if we're going to be able to catch it on camera, but this will hydrate, and then it will slowly release water into your soil. I've been putting this on one of my really sensitive calathea that needs, it cannot be dried out even for a second. Um, this is a great option also for if you're traveling, you can fill it up, put it in your plant to make sure that it gets watered evenly as you travel. The only other thing you have to figure out is how long it takes for this to drain. And there's multitudes of different types. There's the orbs. They make them in all sorts of shapes now. You can get classic terracotta spikes that you can actually fill a wine bottle with, put the terracotta spike on the bottom, flip it over. Google to your heart's desire, but this is another great watering tool. Okay, little shroomy, let's put you back. Speaking of watering tools, let's talk about some tools that I have found and love for watering. I have tried all the watering cans on the market, I feel like at this point. And what I have found with houseplants, you need a watering can with a skinny spout, right? Tropical foliage is hard to get under. And also sometimes you have to lean, right? So you want a long skinny spout to get under the foliage and give a good amount of watering. Your garden watering cans that have like the, the huge face that's almost like a sunflower that is like a huge amount of water and spray is not going to work in your houseplants. You're going to get water everywhere. I highly recommend a watering can like this. This is by Mod Sprout. I have like four of these in my house. Super chic that comes, I think, in brass and green. But any watering can with a nice skinny spout is going to be great. Now, for, for tinier plants or for plants like this hurricane bird's nest fern, where it's really hard to get even the skinniest of watering cans like under the, the foliage, I have found that these cutie little things, these cutie little squeeze bottles are great to get under there. It's like kind of the perfect angle to get under there and squeeze and water that way. So these little guys work great for small plants plants with sensitive foliage or plants with thick foliage. African violets have really sensitive foliage. You do not want to get the tops of those leaves wet. So I would go in and water my African violet with this and just squeeze it. Also, it's good to squeeze at your husband when he's not looking. Ah, and last but not least, the newest addition to my collection. I've seen these go floating around on socials. These are the big guns, okay, guys? This is the big gun. This is like a gallon and a half, I think, but this is a pump sprayer. If you have a green wall, if you have plants that are hard to reach, um, or if you have plants that are, yeah, hard to reach or like kind of far away, you can get this thing called a pump sprayer. I'm kind of obsessed with it. You pump it. Hold on, let me show you. And that's what makes the air pressure. Oh, I've already pumped this. So this is pressurized and ready to go. And then you can twist this to either be a wider spray or a, can you see it? Um, direct stream. So if I needed to water this staghorn fern over here, instead of trying to like take this really heavy watering can and like angle it in and go like that, 
And like, this is for people who have really large plant collections, right? Like if you have a few houseplants, you don't need this. I get it. Like I'm that girl, but this, if you have a lot of houseplants really helps because also it's so much water. You'll find that if you have a lot of houseplants, you have to go back to your water. You have to go back to your sink and refill your watering can so much. That's also why I like this because it holds a lot of water. But anyway, in order to do it, all I have to do is put my little nozzle there and water. It just makes watering so much easier. And if I had my green wall, I used to have a green wall in my house. I didn't have this before. I had to like water like a gymnast, like on one leg to get there, but I could easily just stand there and water it. Or I could, you know, whoopsies. And it has a handle. So you can walk around your house holding the handle. Your arm isn't gonna get tired from holding your watering can. Just walk around, give you a spritz, give you a spritz. I don't know, I'm kind of into it, guys. I know this is intense, but it's my newest toy. Okay, enough of this, <laughs> let's put this away. Before we wrap up, I also just want to say, if you follow me on Instagram at Growing Joy with Maria, I harp on this a lot, um, and also on my podcast, Growing Joy with Plants. Drainage holes are so important, especially if you're a beginning waterer, if you're a beginning plant parent, if you are a little nervous about, am I watering correctly? Am I overwatering? Am I underwatering? Drainage holes are going to be your best friend here. It is so much harder to overwater a plant that has drainage holes than to overwater a plant with no drainage holes. Because this is what happened when I was in my plant killer days. So I'm an epic plant killer turned happy plant lady. When I was in my plant killer days, I would take plants and I would put them in pots with no drainage. So let's say I took this plant and I put it in a pot with no drainage. I would water it too much and the water would have nowhere to go. The water would then sit, the plant's roots would rot, and the plant would die and I would feel so bad because I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was like, well, I watered it. I think I'm doing it correctly. And then I felt so bad. And I was, you know, I labeled myself a plant killer and I kind of just moved on with my life. And I don't want that to happen to you. So you save yourself so many problems if you just put your plants in pots with drainage holes and then put them with here. You can use pots with no drainage holes. You can do it successfully. I've done it successfully. But if you're a beginner, I just advise you to set yourself up for success, right? Um, we all, I want you to win. I want you to win, plant friend. I want you to have so many luscious plants that bring you so much joy. Do you have any watering techniques that I missed? I'd love to hear. Please put them in the comments. If there was anything in particular that you had an aha moment about, I'd love to hear that too. Please like and subscribe if this was helpful. We've got so many more videos coming. Thank you so much to Proven Winners Leaf Joy for sponsoring today's video and making this in partnership. It means so much to me that they support me to support you to make all of this amazing educational information. If you don't know, look for the Proven Winners Leaf Joy tags at your garden center. Ask for Proven Winners Leaf Joy plants. They're grown in this state of the art greenhouse, such high quality plants, such interesting species. And these are their pots too. They come in these really beautiful pots. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have requests for other care videos. And until next time, my sweet plant friend, keep growing joy.